Welcome to the Operator Day. My name is Cédric Jégou, VP of Product Management at Canon Nicole. Very happy to be here and to introduce the Operator Day. I'm here with Mark. Uh, welcome, Mark. Thank you for joining. Mark is the founder and the CEO of Canon Nicole, the company behind the moon. The Operator Day here is the sixth session. Uh, we already did five sessions in the past where we explain what are the operators, how to use them, how to create with them applications that can be deployed on many uh, Kubernetes environments, and uh, how to automate and simplify the configuration of the deployment of such applications. As usual, we did a, a survey before the operator day to capture some insight or some feedback from the engineers and the developers, the Kubernetes developers. And during this survey, we capture different trends. One of them is that the operators really improve and get more mature. And according to the survey, 20% of the engineers are really using operators in production today, which is a big change compared to the previous years. Uh, so it seems, that the, it seems that the things are on track, but deploying on operating databases with stateful set inside Kubernetes is still a very complex task. Um, using MySQL on operators, for instance, one of the questions of the survey, 60% of the people really want to use operators. They believe that it will solve, solve a lot of problems that they have and will really simplify or orchestrate the deployment. But still, 22% are still afraid to deploy MySQL on Kubernetes because they believe that it's not yet much. Another point that needs to be addressed as well in this survey is that there is also a need to have what we call multi-cloud operations, private on public cloud, and where there is a need to have a framework that will really work on the different cloud. In that sense, I would like to ask Mark, Mark, what is going on at Mac Canonical and how Canonical is addressing those problems today? Mm, that's really interesting that the survey results that you characterized there, I think, capture nicely some of the key uh, issues of the day. Number one, um, you know, databases on Kubernetes and making that bulletproof, making that reliable, making that um, uh, kind of multi-cloud is really interesting. And the general theme of, of hybrid and multi-cloud computing with Kubernetes, uh, those are sort of two very big themes uh, for me and for Canonical, as well as the, I think the Kubernetes community as a whole. Um, so just to catch people up on on kind of canonical on Kate's, um, uh, a bunch of stuff has happened since uh, the last KubeCon. Our, our real focus throughout this Kubernetes journey has been partnership with the infrastructure providers because my view has always been that in the end, the best Kubernetes to use is the easiest Kubernetes to use, and that's almost certainly going to be the push button Kubernetes on the infrastructure that you're using. So working with um, Google on GKE, working with Microsoft on AKS and Azure, working with Amazon with uh, EKS uh, and EKS Anywhere. Um, uh, and interestingly now, uh, we can talk about working with VMware on Kubernetes on VMware, right? So making it so that wherever you might be going for infrastructure, you can get a consistent Ubuntu container host um, where you've got an optimized and secured consistent experience for your own management of the of the container nodes effectively, um, the nodes running the, the Kubernetes. We continue to do a bunch of work also on uh, microcates and that gained FIPS support. So that's, that's the right thing to use where you just want a no-brainer Kubernetes. Um, um, as well as a, a microcates AWS appliance. So the theme there is really trying to get people to the place where they can just go and push a button and get a microcates cluster anywhere, um, which um, is is sort of a consistent autonomous Kubernetes. The particular theme there really is for ISVs, people who would deliver a solution. They need a Kubernetes layer in there. They don't want to have a different Kubernetes layer, layer in every environment, so they just embed microcates and they have kind of autonomous, no brain, uh, no buttons, no, no knobs, uh, Kubernetes environment under the hood effectively for their solution. Um, on the bare metal front, uh, a lot of folks interested in kubevert. So we now have charms of kubevert. So you can build charmed Kubernetes canonicals, kind of more sophisticated Kubernetes offering with kubevert. And um, if that's your thing, 
Um, on the application front, um, exciting release recently of Kubeflow 1.7. So Kubeflow is an end-to-end -end infrastructure for AIML um, experiments, training, and inference serving. Um, and uh, that has benefited from a lot of work. Um, it's moving to the CNCF. Um, and, uh, and the best way to, to play with Kubeflow 1.7 is to Juju deploy it. You get a bunch of charmed operators that will work in a consistent fashion uh, and will run on the cates of your choice. Uh, I mentioned Juju there. That's really the heart of our thinking about how we take this, this chaotic landscape of multi-vendor operators and create unified designed user experiences so that you can integrate operators from a bunch of different vendors and, and have a unified view of those operators and unified operations of the operators. Um, and the big focus there has been secrets and credential management at the, in, the, in the controller. Uh, and at the uh, ecosystem level, it's really been databases. So I'm excited to see uh, that databases showed up in the survey as a number one kind of area of interest for people. Uh, I hope today you're going to see uh, really exciting, clean, beautiful uh, user experiences for running databases on Kubernetes with uh, charmed operators. Cedric, back to you. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. So indeed, effectively, today we will see in action all those technologies in order to deploy WordPress, MySQL, also to deploy certificates, for instance, in order to encrypt as uh, communication between the different components. And of course, everything here inside your popular landscape in Kubernetes. So it's quite amazing how the, the application ecosystem continues to expand. There's just more and more things that an organization will want to run on Kubernetes. But it, there's a lot of toil. There's a lot of sort of exhausting work to stand something up, you know, containerize something, and then stand that up and then integrate that with your observability and your logging and your backup and your... Um, tracing infrastructure and so on. What I'm really hoping people get from the program today is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel and a real sense of, the, of direction for how you would work with lots of operators from lots of vendors without getting dragged down into the weeds. And I'm really excited that we can, we're going to start the day with, with um, kind of a, a demo reel, um, a kind of greatest hits, a highlight effectively walkthrough of of what it feels like to start with nothing, just a blank Kubernetes, um, and then use Terraform to drive a whole series of deployments, um, op uh, operator deployments effectively, and how all of that gets integrated, how all of those pieces get glued together, how things like Let's Encrypt and all the Grafana you might uh, need or want in the world, um, uh, all of that comes together in a really, really nice unified user experience. Um, I hope that that the next that this demo, the next kind of uh, session, really takes the lid off for you, and you you get a sense of what the future looks like um, for application management on Kubernetes. Uh, so, without further ado, Cedric, what do you reckon? Should we should we hand folks over um, to Simi? Let's go. Yeah, let's go to the summary and with the demos that will explain everything that will happen to today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cedric and Mark. My name is Sime, and I'm the engineering manager of the observability team at Canonical. In this demo, I will give you a little taste of the power of Juju as a cross-substrate, cross-cloud operations management and automation suite. Let's assume we're just about to set up some new infrastructure and applications for a project that we're working on. Our goal is to invest as little time and effort into infrastructure administration as possible, and instead being able to focus on the value propositions of our project. Our goal of this demo is to deploy MongoDB to use as a NoSQL database integrated with our other pre-existing infrastructure. Additionally, we'd like to deploy WordPress as well as a cluster of MySQL instances backing it. We'd also like to deploy an observability stack to make sure we have the tools needed to ensure continuous operations. To perform the actual deployment, we'll use Terraform, utilizing its Juju provider to have Juju do all of the work of deploying and wiring our applications together. The clouds we'll use to accomplish this are Kubernetes and LexD, as seen in the picture. When we're done, we want to end up with something that looks a bit like this, with MongoDB being deployed on LexD together with an observability agent, the observability stack being deployed on Kubernetes, and the 
WordPress and MySQL instances deployed on Kubernetes as well. And as any good TV chef, I prepared a Terraform project with all the files needed for this. Let's have a look at one of them. All right, so we're gonna have a look at the WordPress application. Here we have all the information needed for Terraform and Juju to be able to deploy and provision the application that we want to have in our cluster. This goes for models, for applications, and for the integrations between these applications as well, using all these files that I keep on disk. And just to show you that I'm not cheating, here are the models on each of the clouds that we're going to deploy to. Just the controller models, so it's completely empty. Excellent. And with that, we're going to run Terraform Apply. Terraform will now show us everything it will deploy. And we'll confirm that we want to do this by typing yes. And if we now have a look at one of the models, you can see that Juju has started to spin up the resources that we need. However, this will take a while for Juju and Terraform to reconcile. So let's skip ahead a bit. Now let's have a look at how our Juju model for LexD is doing. Since this is on a different controller on a different cloud, we will need to wire it together with the observability relations we have in the uh, Kubernetes cloud. So let's go ahead and do that. Once for the metrics, the logs, and once for the dashboards. And if we now have a look at our model again, it should look a lot greener. Excellent. Okay, so now let's jump over to Kubernetes. We have our observability stack available here, as well as our web stack of MySQL and WordPress available in the web model. Everything seems to have reconciled correctly. Awesome, okay. Now let's jump into Grafana and have a look at all the metrics we gather. We will use the IP address provided here, and but we first need to also get a password for logging in. There, excellent, okay. Now let's jump to Grafana. So we'll enter Grafana by using the catalog. And then we'll use the credentials that we got from our action to log in. And if we go to the dashboards tab here, you'll see that we have quite a lot of dashboards out of the box. These are all provided using the integrations set up by Juju. For instance, if we want to have a look at the MongoDB dashboard, we'll go to it and then we'll pick the model we want to check in this case, the data model, as well as the application being MongoDB. And then if we give it a little bit of time, we should start to see the data rolling in. All right, and there we go. Data is coming in from our MongoDB and everything seems to be green. The same goes for all of the components of the observability stack, as well as for the MySQL uh, instances that we deployed. And with that, we have a quite good understanding of what is going on in our deployment after the fact that we've deployed it, all thanks to Juju's integrations. Now, let's go back to our slides to sum up. So to sum up, we have deployed MongoDB on LexD. We have deployed WordPress and MySQL on Kubernetes, as well as an observability stack that also resides on Kubernetes. We have also wired it all together all with almost exclusively running Terraform Apply. Quite exciting stuff, quite a lot of work that we got done in just a few commands. Thanks for listening and back to Mark and Cedric.